Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba and I'm here with my good brother Juma Rafiki and uh, we've been talking about you know, our energy you now is Africa for the Africans you know we have these uh, cultural t-shirts from the last few journeys that Juma have traveled with us uh, to uh, Ghana, Senegal, Gambia, Tanzania and then upcoming journey will be uh, Liberia, Liberia. You know, five journeys so we appreciate his energy and uh, you know we look into this share his experience uh, and as far as this, uh, talk about a level of consciousness on the African continent uh, looking to talk about different things as far as this uh, you know what's affecting our content, continent and just how we're drawn in uh, from being an African diaspora and then saying that, hey you know we want to live do business we want to travel we want to do things in Africa so first thing I want to ask my good brother Juma is um, uh, what are some of the other things that inspire you to this uh, be so interested in Africa and the future and just the world of uh, you know, <clears throat> geopolitics? Well, I guess, you know, first and foremost, I think some of the, um, the recent uh, events that have been in the news when it comes to the formation of, of the BRICS nations in um, East Africa and ECOWAS in the West. So the BRICS nations are a a combination or conglomeration of nations that are joined together to form its own economic bloc. That's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Now, the United States has always had, was, was the number one hegemonic economic ruler in the Western world for the last few decades, right? That's why when you go to Africa or Ghana, the American dollar is more powerful than the CD or any other African currency that you might go to, whether it's Tanzania or not. Now, when these nations finish, I think that their objective, their, 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 their number one main objective is to form their own central bank. That means that the American dollar in the future will be worthless in those countries unless, you, unless, you, unless you're using their currency. We, I don't know what that's going to look like right now, but it's, it's, it has the potential to upset the economic hegemonic order of the United States and Europe on the African continent. The same thing on ECOWAS, where Francophone nations have been using the franc and keeping Africans in debt um, uh, for decades. And this is another reason why in Niger, they're kicking the French out of there. So it's, it's, it's a complicated type of a transition, but it's also a transition that's happening before our very eyes. And I think it would behoove us and our audience in order to take a look at that and study it to find out what effects it might have on the Pan-African movement on the African continent. Don't forget that when it comes to BRICS nations, the Russians are still, they're not Europeans, but they're still white people. Right, and although they might have had played a role in certain liberation movements on the African continent in the past, but by donating weapons um, and whatnot for for the, um, uh, that supported um, us in the past, it doesn't mean that they won't turn into enemies in the future. But only the the completely decolonized mind that sees that type of person on the African continent, he'll, he'll be the only one that will be able to see it. And the slave mind will, won't be able to see it and will make negative decisions in terms of Pan-Africanism and, and uh, sell the continent into further uh, servitude. I always say that watch all white people with, with um, one eye open. I really do. I know that you have to watch your own people as well because a Negro pen, I don't know if too many of our people are familiar with that, but I've worked with them um, at my job um, every day. They look like us on the outside, but all of their sentiments and even their ways of talking and expressing themselves and the things that they're interested in are of a European nature and not African. When we go to work every day, African concerns, African needs, African thoughts never rise to the surface. So back to what I was saying before, we need to think about and focus more on what's going happening on with the ECOWAS nations in the West and BRICS in the East with the Pan-African focus.
Yes, brother. That's a whole lot of uh, uh, competition, and um, <laughs> people know which direction they go to. I know. Uh, but uh, uh, the good thing of it is um, uh, that's an international uh, union, you know, because you know before we're talking about uh, ECOWAS, and we're talking about African Union. Right. Now, now South Africa is joining an international partnership. Exactly. And they're actually the only African con country, uh, only country from the African continent. That's a part of uh, BRICS South, at this moment, South right? South Africa. It is South Africa. Uh, so maybe, uh, you know, maybe they're onto something. So um, we will see, um, you know, but... Um, but I, 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 don't think, is, uh, I don't think it takes... That's the direction to go to. Uh, yeah. And then... I, I don't think it takes too much afterthought in the understanding that Brazil, Russia, and India, and China are not African people, right? right. And then when you include South Africa which is still struggling to separate itself from the white supremacist infrastructure and mindset through Julius Malema, you know, the Africans dominate in population and just based on population, they can dominate the politics of South Africa. If that transition happens the way I think it's going to happen with E, uh, with EFFF, with Julius Malema, that would mean that blacks will control the economics and, and politics of that nation. And there might be a further transition of white Afrikaners out of that nation who, can't, who won't be able to live under that type of transitional rule. Don't forget, though, that the Afrikaners, the Dutch and the British, were the ones that went down there that took South Africa from the indigenous people. It's the indigenous people are the ones who are most entitled to rule South Africa. I don't care what the Chinese or the Indians say. They were brought in later to build railroads and everything else and, and given a, a status above the black natives so that they were able to flourish and the blacks were um, basically at the bottom and still under um, the control of uh, the apartheid regime. Yeah, and then the, the chain of command that you just explained, or the flow that you just explained, you know, are people still on the bottom, and then uh, the people they brought in is uh, still in the middle, right. and then they're right. still on top. Well, in America... Like, it has never changed, it has not changed any right. form of order. Now, some people may say, well, uh, you know, more black people have gotten more opportunities since then, uh, and that may be a, a direct fa factor, but then... The level of ownership as far as the corporations, as far as uh, the natural resources, is not like a group of black people are getting more uh, in command of those things, or yeah. the government is even more in command. Uh, from what I know, everything was still left in place. Whoever owned certain things still own it. Mm -hmm. The De Beers and them probably still own the, the diamond and gold mines there. Yeah, I mean, none of the, the, those things are ever yeah. given up. Uh, but One of the richest men in South Africa but, is still a white man. Uh, but you know, nevertheless, it's you know, it's uh, not saying that it's a whole bunch of progress, but it's it's uh, you know, you have a situation now where you just have to figure it out from here because now you have different elements of things to deal with. You know, before you're dealing with yeah. uh, an apartheid yeah. regime, now you're dealing with something new and something different and something. Not saying it's better or worse, but it's well, we don't know yet. It's it's, it's a little complicated because now right. you have a mixture of all different kind of people. Right. In a certain system. Yeah. But and I think that the Pan-African mind that is deeply grounded in Pan-African thought um, is the best buffer and filter in order to navigate these upcoming changes. It's, it's kind of like saying you have to know who you are first as you move forward. And don't deviate from that. Like... Don't turn into a Negro peon on the African continent because you're able to go left when you should be going right. That continent belongs to us. So you don't let that paradigm, you don't, you don't change your mindset. You don't hate anybody, but you, you always keep your focus on, on, on the Pan-African mindset in the same way that the Jews did Zionism for Israel. That program of Zionism was written a long time ago by Theodor Herzl in Poland, a Polish Jew. But whether you are a Jew in Poland or a Jew in Israel or a Jew in the United States, you're still what? A, a Jew. Jew. And, and that program is still relevant. Right. 
To and if I'm an African in America, and an African on the African continent, whether I'm part of this BRICS agreement or not, my focus doesn't change. It doesn't get watered down with a, a, um, an, an illusion of inclusivity or whatever and stuff like that. I have to navigate those waters as I, as I empower my people with my forward progress. You know, to give you a slight example, Magic Johnson, after he had embraced the business concept of capitalism and the practice of capitalism after his basketball career, made certain inroads in donating um, investments in the South Central of Los Angeles that was designed to empower his people, right? Now, no matter how that he might have deviated it from that uh, up until now, up until right now, 2023, I can only say that his deviation or lack of investment in his in the African American community was because of a lack of a Pan African focus, right? He might not even be able to get too deep into that because of his commitments and and relationships with these other people. But on the African continent, we should, we should be able to feel safer at navigating the economic investment waters and, and the re redirection of our investments toward our people because that is our continent. This nation is, a, is, is only 200 and something odd years old it's, and it's a colonialized nation. Those people were almost wiped out to a certain degree and relegated to reservations. That's not going to happen to us on the African continent. You know, but it's only if we maintain our rightful place with the mindset that we are Africans and we're the only ones entitled to that continent can we achieve our ultimate aim of totally empowering our people, getting those kids out of the Congo, digging cobalt and other natural resources out with their bare hands, you know, we have to save them too. Because Serious. the Congo is the heart of Africa. Serious. It's the heart, just like your heart in, in your body. And nobody focuses on that. But, this, but that one part of Africa, has, I think other than outside of the agricultural portions of Africa that were the boards and the Africanas had settled in order to take advantage of the climates and the, and the environment in order to raise crops, the Congo is, is, the heart, is, the, is the beating heartbeat of Africa. And wherever our children are suffering, you know, for those natural resources, uh, we have to save them and then take advantage of those natural resources in order to lift ourselves up globally out of um, to take our rightful place in the world, to get the respect that we deserve in the world. We don't get that right now. I don't, we don't get that through a, a basketball player. We don't get that through a singer. You know, we don't get that through a, a hybrid black president who became the, the so-called first black president of the United States and was responsible for setting back the Pan-African movement by killing one of our great liberators. And then that person? Uh, Muammar Gaddafi. There you go. Who was going to put him on the gold standard using the dinar as the number one currency throughout the continent. You know, but when you achieve these offices in Congress and the Senate and the United States presidency, you're not in charge. And you're not there to liberate or free or no, do anything with black no, people. You're no. here to be a servant. Right. You're here to just do a job to keep the empire of America running. You're gonna do what they tell you to do, or they're yeah, gonna use. You, you know, you're gonna be. You know, you just. You know, you 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 basically following orders. Right. They've all, and they've already shown you through history that they've so, killed one president of their presidents. What do you think they would do to you if you don't do what they tell you to do? Yeah. So it's a little tricky, family. So that's what we talk about, family. The world of. Uh, Geopolitics here with our good brother Juma Rafiki, yeah. who have traveled the African continent, who have uh, been around, who have been, you know, been a professional and literally been a person that's been part of this pan African yeah. movement and want to see us do better, want to see us evolve. Yeah, want to see myself do better, want to see our children do better, 
and all African people on the Af on the, on the globe on the planet. But Africa is the beating, the heartbeat, the beating heart of of who we are. And how do we say if we don't save her, we can't save ourselves? That's it, family. So what we encourage you, family, is to tune into some of our live YouTube videos as we, as we talk about Pan Africanism and nation building. And then uh, tune into some of the other things that we talk about as far as traveling, living, doing business, and investing in Africa. Uh, so if you're open to that world, you can always connect with us. That's what we're about. We're about building a network of us that can just really be a part of a connection from the Americas to the African continent and really just uh, building a future on the African continent and you know getting our children, our generation more competing in the world of technology, business, enterprising, you know, and you know, not letting up in this uh, understanding that you know it's what we are, you know, where we are, you know, we're in a world where yeah. all different nations and races of people and everybody want to be the next superpower or they want to progress or they want certain things. So if we're slacking off, we're not gonna, you know, we're not even gonna be able to even compete. So trying to get uh, more and more people uh, to bring the A games and more and more people who are ready and open to connecting with us, reach out. Our information is just always available from our website, AfricaForTheAfricans.org, or you can just text, email, reach out to me and I'll connect with you. Uh, so, Juma, appreciate you traveling on all of those journeys with us. Yeah, many more Over the years. Yeah. And um, ultimately, uh, our brother obviously have had a great time because he keep on coming back. He's actually here at Bomani Technology here in Georgia and this is where we do all of our technical and business support operation uh, for all the business that we do and the people that we do business for. Uh, so, uh, and then this is where we shoot some of our live and direct our videos. Uh, so my brother came by, you know, we came out to handle certain business and came out to connect with us. Uh, so definitely appreciate him coming through and then I'm always reaching out to other people say, you know, come on through when you're here in Georgia so we can connect. We can always meet out in town, we can meet here and we can just connect, network and build and uh, get you ready. Uh, so yes my brother, so you already said you're ready for Liberia uh, which is our next journey. And, um, and we're actually on our way to Tanzania in November, then South Africa in December. And so we're going to definitely connect with you after that. So that's three journeys in, in a row that we're working on. Uh, so that's what we do here also. There's a whole lot of arrangements and planning. And you know, you going to see all the business stuff over there. Yeah. So that's what we do, brother. And we do it like it's nothing. You know I mean, that's when you, you know, that's why it's important to build a education in the world of technology and business. That way you can just do these things because if you don't, then you'd be like, how you do this, how you do that? And you end up just uh, getting caught up into that world where you spend all your money paying everybody to do everything because you can't do anything. Right, <laughs> right. That's not going to work, especially if you're building grassroots. Yeah. Uh, so, so definitely, family, the journey continues. And Juma, appreciate you coming through, brother. And Thank you. Uh, don't you just love these classic yes, t-shirts, man? Yes, I do. One day I'm going to have... I uh, think I'm going to wear this back on the plane to Los Angeles. There you go, man. They, you know? Mm. And people, you know, got a website and everything on the back. Right. Uh, so yeah, one day we're gonna just build our enterprise right here in Jahadzi, uh, Ghana, and we're gonna have our entire production. All these things, you know, you see the books, you see the T-shirts. You know, that's the goal. Our goal is to just be get into production. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, you see tourism, but that tourism is that energy that takes us into the world of investments, into into the world of enterprising. So we're looking to keep on building this brand. So far, we're 17 years strong. And we're going to keep it going on. So family, the journey continues. Africa for the African. <laughs> All right. Peace.